Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we're gonna to talk about how to set up a unified device using what is called layer three adoption. And that's pretty much just a fancy way of saying we're gonna figure out how to attach a unified device to a controller which is located on a different network. So basically what this looks like is say you've got your home router or your business router or whatever, and say you have a switch. Now you're gonna plug your unified device into this switch, it's gonna power on all of that, and you wanna adopt it to a controller but that sits somewhere else over here, maybe through an entirely different router in a switch or just on another switch or whatever. Basically, the gist of the story is the IP of the network you put the Unify access point on, for example, has a different IP address on a different network than the controller. So in this example that I'm gonna be going over today, our access point is actually going to have an IP address of 10.88.26.100, but our controller is on 10.88.13.118. And since these are both slash uh, 24s, let's go ahead and get real technical here. Um, these are on different networks. So one's on 13 and one's on 26. Now by default, the AP, when it's looking for a controller, it's only gonna look for it within its own subnet. It's not gonna cross the router into any other network. So when we log into our controller, we're not gonna see this access point ready for adoption like we typically would. So this is where we have to do something a little bit different to get this to work. It's not just straight plug and play and adopt. We've gotta actually find a way to tell our access point where our controller is. So just somehow we got to tell our access point that, hey, dot .118 or dot .13.118 is where you're going to want to try to uh, adopt to. Now, there is three different ways of doing this. Technically, there's two different ways, but there's three different methods that I like to use. And I'm just going to put them into these three categories here. We've got manual set inform, which is the command that we're going to use on the access point to set what's called the inform address and all that is is the IP address of our Unify controller. Uh, second option is DNS inform, which is basically going to take the same steps as manual set inform. We're gonna do both of these manually, except DNS. We're just going to tie our controller to a DNS host name so that in case it changes in the future, we really don't have to do this again. And then our last option is DHCP option 43, which is probably the easiest, but also the most confusing. Basically, we're gonna push out an option using DHCP, which will automatically tell our access points what the IP address of the controller is. Now, even though this is layer three adoption, um, this isn't just used for initial setup. So while basically all of the guides you're gonna see on this will revolve around uh, deploying a new network and tying that all back to an existing controller, this is also extremely useful in the exact same steps you would take if you are migrating um, a controller to a different server manually. Now, there are built-in mechanisms in the controller that allow you to migrate devices from one to the other. There's a built-in step-by-step um, -step process which automatically changes the inform address of existing devices to point to whatever your new controller is gonna be. However, nine times out of 10, when I migrate a Unify controller, the deployments are not really that big. And personally, it's not worth my time to even go through that migration process. I just take a backup of that controller, restore it somewhere else, and then I manually update these inform addresses. That is typically what I do. And especially if there's been some forethought, the DNS inform is awesome for this. Because if we set our inform addresses to a DNS host name, when I move the controller, I don't even have to do the migration steps at all. I just restore the controller somewhere else and I update DNS and all of my devices automatically know where to go for the controller. So while setting a DNS host name goes hand in hand with manual, you do have to do that on every device. In the future, if you ever have to move them again, it makes it the easiest by far. So let's go ahead and just see how we do each of these. We're gonna start with manual inform. And I have my typical Toasty VM already set up here and a new instance of the Unify controller. Now, if we open that up and go to devices, I see that there are no devices um, that have been adopted. However, I do have an access point connected on my network somewhere. And as I said before, its IP is 26.100. 
So if we bring up command prompt, we can ping 10.88.26.100. That is our unified device. So it's online, but it's not showing up in our controller. So what we have to do is we have to SSH into it. So let's download an SSH client. I'm just going to do download putty. And we're going to SSH to 10.88.26.100. And accept the key. And if you haven't set the device up, if it's not adopted to any controller already, then you're going to use the default credentials UBNT and UBNT, both username and password. And now we are into the command line of the actual Unify access point. And you can see it's a UAP AC Pro Generation 2. And all we need to do here is just point it to the address using a set inform command. So let's just verify with an IP config what the IP of our controller is. 10.88.13.118. So the command we're going to put in here is set dash inform and then HTTP colon forward slash forward slash 10.88.13. Dot 188 colon 8080 because that's the port it uses for uh, adoption and then forward slash inform and pretty much as soon as we hit enter here it's probably going to pop up in the controller so i'm going to bring that back up and move this and hit enter on there and it says use the controller to complete the adopt process so the access point should now be communicating back to this controller and it didn't immediately pop up here like i thought it would so let's just do a refresh and whoopsie, it didn't show up there because I fat fingered 118 and put in 188. Whoops. So all we have to do is type that in again with uh, the actual correct information. Set inform HTTP, hit enter, use the controller to complete the adopt process, and boom, there, now it immediately popped up. So that's what's supposed to happen. So at this point, our access point has that manual line of configuration in there to point it to the correct controller. And all we have to do is click adopt and adopt the device. And that is method one, or manually setting the inform address. Now, method two, using DNS, is the exact same thing. We're still going to SSH to the device and use that set inform command. However, instead of doing 10.88.13.118, we're going to actually put in a host name. And to do that, we need to have some sort of a DNS configured, which may or may not be self-explanatory that you need your own DNS server, but basically you have to have your own server that you manage where you can actually put in custom names uh, for your domain and point them to IP addresses. So if you're using like 8.8.8.8 .8 or any public DNS server uh, through DHCP for your clients, um, this really isn't going to work because you have to have control over the DNS in order to make the A record for this to work. And going along with that, your access points need to have that DNS server as well. So I've seen a lot of deployments where they actually do have an internal DNS and all the workstations are pointed to it. But for some reason, when they deploy the access points, they're on a different network and they just point them to 8.8.8.8. So even if we do use the host name and set it up on DNS, because all of our access points don't have that DNS server, they're not going to be able to find the controller. So really the requirements are you need control of a DNS server and your access points need to already have that DNS server configured. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new host, and we're going to call it uh, toasty-unify, and my qualified domain name is .lan, and we're going to give it the IP address of 10.88.13.118, or the address of our controller. And I'll go ahead and add the host into DNS, and that is all I need to do here. Now, if I already had an existing installation and my access points don't have the right DNS server to find that, we can just click on the device, go to settings, and we can update the network to use a static IP, and we can manually put in our DNS server if for some reason they're not already pointed to it. Now mine in DHCP, when it got this 26.100 address, it also picked up my internal DNS servers, so I'm good on that front. However, since I just adopted this, I do have to uh, reset it to factory defaults. So let's go to manage and forget. So it'll be restored to factory default. Let's confirm. Now at this point, I'm just gonna wait for it to delete itself from this controller and reboot. And then we should be right back to square one where we need to point this thing to a controller. All right, and I'm pretty sure at this point it's done. It's no longer showing up in this controller. However, I am still able to ping that IP. So pretty sure that it's just been reset to factory default. Now at this point, let's go ahead and SSH back to it. So bring up PuTTY again, 10.88.26.100, SSH to it. 
since I already accepted that key before, it's got the same one. Let's log in as UBNT, UBNT, and we are right back. So let's go ahead and issue that command of set inform space HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. Now, instead of using the IP, I'm gonna put in toasty unify dot lan colon 8080 forward slash inform and go ahead and click enter. Use the uh, controller to complete the adopt process. And there you can see in the background, it popped back up again for us to adopt. And all we gotta do is click adopt. So both of these methods, as I said, they're basically the same. You SSH to the device and you set the inform address. However, the main difference is if you're gonna continue using DNS, it makes things so much easier in the future when you need to migrate a controller somewhere else or just do general maintenance. Because instead of having to go to all 50 of your APs, if you have 50 of them, all you have to do is update the DNS record for Toasty Unify and point it to a different IP address. And then all of your access points are gonna automatically go to that other IP address. You don't have to go through the migration process in the controller. You don't have to SSH to every device and put in the IP. You just have to update DNS. So in a lot of my bigger deployments, that is a lifesaver. Just being able to update one record and migrate the controller Bingo, bango, done. However, we still have to SSH into all our devices at least once to set that inform address, which is still a major downside. And that's gonna bring us to method three, which is DHCP option 43. And basically this one is the best if you're uh, deploying it from scratch pretty much, and you have a way to use option 43, but it can also save you the time down the road. Instead of just having to update the DNS record, you just have to update your option 43 record and then reboot your access points or wait the however many hours you have your DHCP lease scope set and it'll automatically update the inform address. So here we don't have to SSH into any of them ever. We just set this option in DHCP. As long as our access points are set to use DHCP, they're going to grab all of the necessary information. Now. This is going to vary widely depending on what kind of uh, server or router, et cetera, that you're using for DHCP. And before I get into that, I'm just gonna forget this again. Manage, forget, confirm. So actually with uh, unified devices, if you are using like a Dream Machine, Security Gateway, whatever, if it's unified, it is already super easy because all we have to do is go to uh, whatever network we have, and as long as we have DHCP enabled on it, we can set that inform address under our DHCP section. So down here, service management, show options. We have a place right here for option 43, application host address. That is the address of our controller. So if we're using a unified device for DHCP, all we have to do is put in 10.88.13.118 right in here, apply those changes, and now any device that gets DHCP is also gonna get that option. And if it's an access point, it's gonna point it to the controller. Now I am not using a unified device for DHCP. I'm actually using a uh, Windows DHCP server, Windows server. So that at least to me was the most confusing thing to get going. But before we get there, let me go ahead and talk you through edge routers because they are basically just as simple to set up. If we go to our details tab of our DHCP server in our edge router, you can see we have a field that is called Unify Controller. It's even labeled better than in the Unify Controller itself. So if we change this to the 10.88.13.118, then that will do the exact same thing. It is option 43, and it's gonna automatically be sent to all of our DHCP clients. So. Moral of this story is if you're using a Ubiquiti device, it is super easy to do it like this. However, the problem comes in when you're wanting to use a different type of DHCP server. If you don't have a Unify router or it's just different in, in general. Um, I think the TP-Link routers that I've been testing, they have their own version of this option. However, it's not option 43. And as far as I've seen, um, at least up until now, I can't set option 43. So if you have a DHCP server that is limited in how many custom options you can send out, then you're probably not gonna be able to use this. However, I can tell you that Windows Server definitely supports option 43. So let's go ahead and go over to that. And I understand that most of you probably aren't gonna be running um, Windows Server in your home network, but if you're deploying this in enterprise environments, pretty much all of them have a Windows server already. So 
that's why I'm doing it in here as an example. And also because it is super confusing. So under our scope options for our DHCP scope, if we configure the options and add a new one, if we scroll down to option 43, which is vendor specific info, we get this data binary ASCII. You might think, hey, we just got to type in the uh, IP address. However, that is um, not the case. So this is special. We have to put in a hexadecimal value here to point it to our controller. And if you're good at uh, converting IP addresses to hexadecimal, then you can go ahead and do that manually and add a 01 to the front of it. Or we can go to a website that um, can do that for us. So I'm going to go to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash SHIMI dot net forward slash services forward slash option 43. And we're going to get this nice little calculator. And this generator is actually for Cisco and uh, Ruckus devices. Unify is not an option here. However, the only difference um, in these addresses is going to be the first two characters. So we're just going to keep it on Cisco. And if we put in the IP address we use for our controller here, so 10.88.13.118 and hit give me my option 43, we get this nice hex code. Now these first two characters, F1, designates that it's a Cisco device. So we're not going to want that in ours. We're just going to ignore F1 and replace it with 01. So let's go ahead and grab the rest of our uh, hex address here. And we're going to copy that and go back to our DHCP server settings, Oop, configure options, uh, yep, number 43, and we're gonna type in zero, one, and then right click, or not right click, just kidding, we can't actually paste anything into there, so let's put this side by side and type it in. So our value, zero, one, zero, four, zero, A, five, eight, zero, D, seven, six, and then we're gonna hit apply. So now option 43 is a part of our DHCP scope, and it has a value that we basically can't even read. But all this value is, is 01 to designate unify. And then the rest of this is just 10.88.26, or 10, or sorry, 10.88.13.118 in hexadecimal. So at this point, I'm going to get back out of my server and go back to the uh, machine with the controller and go back to devices. Now, because I am too lazy to actually uh, go into my server room and unplug and replug my access point, I'm just going to shut down that port from here. So configure terminal, interface GI22, shut. And then wait a few seconds, issue a no shut, turn that port back on, and bring my video VM back up. Now, as the access point is rebooting, it should grab a DHCP address from my DHCP server. And it's going to grab option 43 and we should see it pop up here. Oh, boom, there it is. So it grabbed that option from DHCP and automatically showed up on our controller. So this one, as long as you have all the uh, <laughs> required items, a DHCP server capable of option 43, then this is probably the easiest one for you. However, if you're using static IPs on all of your um, access points, this one, sorry to say, is not going to work for you. So those are pretty much the three ways that I like to do um, layer three adoption. I'm not entirely sure if there's more ways or not, but those are the ones that I go with. Um, pretty much if I'm setting one up from the ground up, I'm going to be using option 43 and I'm going to make sure that all of my uh, access points are using DHCP. However, if I'm going into an existing environment, I'm probably going to try and use the DNS option if the access points are set to use a DNS server. And if it's a really small deployment and I need to make a change to the inform address, I'm probably just going to do it manually with the IP address. So. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this went through how to get your uh, devices to work over on a different network and also how to ease some migration struggles that you might have. And as always, happy networking.